Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. And we certainly do thank God for his grace that he has given to us unto this day. And I want to uh, say praise the Lord once again. I want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, my name is Suffolk and Bishop Frankie L. Quinn here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. And we certainly do thank God for this opportunity to, and I'm glad that you have joined us uh, for our Bible study on this week. Um, it's a little different and uh, we're going uh, our e-Bible study, but we certainly do thank God, like I said, for the opportunity to stand before you. And as we get started on today, uh, we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer. We do want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. And I'm certainly excited about, even in this hour, what the Lord is doing concerning the body of Christ, concerning uh, his children, and concerning this world. So we want to certainly pray for those that are on the front lines uh, in our hospitals and our nurses and our doctors and all other healthcare professionals. And we certainly also do want to thank God for our leadership. I pray for our president, that the Lord grant him wisdom and knowledge and understanding in his staff and his cabinet. We also do want to thank God and praise God for uh, those that are uh, sick those that are going through and remember even those that are, uh, are strong as well that the Lord will keep them healthy keep us healthy and keep us with that right mind frame to serve and seek after him so as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer we certainly do uh, trust in the Lord and we believe in the power of prayer and one of the things that the Lord wants us to do in this particular time is certainly to seek after him and to call on him. Remember Christian ministries, remember the body of Christ everywhere. So let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you brought us and kept us even unto this very hour. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you have bestowed upon each and every servant of yours to accomplish your purpose and your will. We certainly do bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder in the name of Jesus. And we declare and decree your deliverance and your grace. Remember, Lord, men and women and children everywhere. Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Remember our apostolic fathers and our leaders. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless even those that lead us in the natural, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them and grant them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding according to your might, according to your power, and your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And we certainly do, uh, once again, thank God for this opportunity to stand before you. And I do praise God for you tuning in, uh, both near and far. Um, and um, it's a beautiful day outside, and you could be doing something else, but I certainly do appreciate you uh, joining us for this Bible study. And we won't be before you long, but we do have a, a word from the Lord. And I want to talk to you tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about going through a crisis. And I often said, um, especially in these particular days, that um, though this particular coronavirus and this time and this season that we're in right now um, is new and different to us, but certainly it is not new and different for our God. He is a God that has been through crisis and has taken his children through crisis many a times down through the years. So it's not something that's new. It's not something that's uh, taking him by surprise. And I believe that the Lord, uh, even for us, does have a message uh, through what we're going through, through what we're enduring. 
and I trust in the Lord. So we want to uh, talk to you tonight about going through a crisis, going through a crisis. And um, our Chinese uh, brethren, they have a symbol uh, for crisis, which has evolved uh, through the years. And many uh, leaders use uh, this particular example uh, for leadership and uh, taking people through. And the Chinese symbol for crisis that has evolved means uh, danger and opportunity. Danger and opportunity or danger and despair. And you know, though that we're living in a time right now where we are experiencing a lot of danger, we experience a lot of, of, of turbulent times, but there's certainly also an opportunity uh, for us to represent the body of Christ. In other words, though we're going through a dangerous time, there's still an opportunity for us to continue to represent the body of Christ. Many churches throughout the world and throughout the land, especially uh, in, in, in Erie and even me right now, uh, there's not a whole lot of people uh, that are attending church services right now be based on, as you know, the demands of the state and, and through the laws that have been enacted. But uh, the body of Christ, the body of Christ is, is not a building. It's, it's an organism, a living organism that is the uh, representative of Jesus Christ. So though we're not in the physical, in the sense, church uh, realm, but we're don't ever forget that you're not in the body of Christ, the living organism of Jesus. And based on that, that we're in the living organism or we represent the body of Christ, we are his temple. We are made in his image and in his likeness. Let us not forget what the scripture says, especially uh, for times like these. The Bible tells us in the book of St. Matthew, Jesus taught it himself that he said, uh, uh, ye are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. And if the salt is lost its savior, uh, thence went forth shall it be salted. It is good for nothing but to be cast out and to trodden under the foot of men. And then Jesus said that ye are the light of the world, uh, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. And he tells us to, uh, not to take our light and hide it under a bushel. He tells us to put it on the candlestick so that it can give light to all that are in the house. And he says, then let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, see your good works, see your faith in action, that they thereby may glorify your Father which is in heaven. So this is a great opportunity, brothers and sisters, that uh, we need to take and talk about, not only talk about our faith, but also to show our faith. This is a great opportunity in this time that we're living in right now, not only to talk about faith, but to show our faith. I believe, beloved, that God uh, wants people to see our faith in action. And, and in doing so, um, we will be able to glorify him and to magnify him. And I believe also that God wants us, he truly wants us uh, to seek him like never before. There's a particular scripture that, that says in the book of 2 Chronicles, uh, chapter number seven and uh, verse 14, he said, if my people, that were called by my name should humble themselves and pray. If they would seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. And notice what it says, if my people, if the people of God, and he's not talking about the world because the world necessarily won't turn and seek him. Um, but he's expecting the body, the body of Christ to seek him. 
He said, if my people, notice, that were called by my name. And we have the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then the name you know is the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the scripture says, and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. So those that proclaim and have the name, have the name of Jesus that's been baptized in his name and, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. He said, if those would, that are called by my name would uh, humble themselves and pray, and if they would notice, seek my face, and in seeking the Lord, if they would also turn, turn from their wicked ways, the Lord said, then I would hear from heaven he would hear from heaven. He would forgive our sins. He would, and even uh, heal our land. And that's what we want the Lord to do. We want the Lord to bless us and to heal us and to deliver us. And the message that the Lord wants us to do and wants us to have in our hearts and our minds is that he wants us to seek him, to seek him like never before. And first and foremost, in seeking the Lord, in seeking the Lord, in seeking the Lord, the scripture tells us in the book of uh, St. Uh, Matthew, chapter number six, he said, Jesus said himself, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So in seeking the Lord, the first thing and the first and foremost thing you must do, you must seek the Lord. You must seek the Lord, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all these other things shall be added unto you. And what he means by when he says seek his kingdom in this for the this particular Bible study, which I'm referring to, seek his authority, seek his lordship, seek his power, his kingdom. It's not meat and drink, but it's, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So seek his power, seek his authority, and seek uh, 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 those things that are laid up in heaven for you. And notice then he says, seek also his righteousness. In these days and times, we got to seek the righteousness of God. And when we talk about the righteousness of God, we're really talking about right behavior, what God calls right, living a holy and a righteous lifestyle. Paul put it this way. He says, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he said, be not conformed, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and that, and that acceptable and perfect will of God. So in seeking the kingdom of God, you've got to seek the righteousness of God, which represents doing the things that God has ordained you to do the right way, living a holy way, living a godly way. And that's what Paul was beseeching us to do. And when we begin to seek God and to pursue after God and his kingdom and his righteousness, then there's a second thing that we ought to be seeking. In these days and times, as we're seeking God and calling on his name, we ought to also be seeking uh, a, the assignment that God wants us to carry out in this season. What, Lord, what do you want us to do? And in order to find out what God wants you to do and what your assignment is, you have to seek him for yourself. And what do you mean, brother pastor, seek him for yourself? You must seek him through prayer. You must seek him through fasting. You must seek him through reading the word and, and then through the study of the word of God and then being obedient to what he reveals. If you do these things, then you will find him. You will find his desire. You will find what the Lord wants you to do. 
And in seeking him in such a way, if you seek him through prayer, through fasting, through, through, through study of his word, and through faith in the hope of obedience, then you'll find yourself laying aside what the scripture says, every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. In other words, when you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. And as you draw nigh to him and closer to him and, and literally putting off the, the, the worldly mind and putting on the spiritual mind, then you'll gain strength, you'll gain power, you'll gain peace, you'll gain joy. And, and you'll find yourself, the, this world, wearing it, as we say, as a loose garment. It will, it will have less attraction, less lure for you and you as you pursue the things of God, as you pursue after those things that God has called you for. And the thought uh, uh, that you may have that, well, Lord, I'm not worthy to carry out this particular assignment. I'm not worthy to do what you've asked me to do. If you begin to seek him and to call on him, your mindset will change. You will, you, will, you will have the mindset that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You'll have the mindset that says, greater is he that is in me that he, than he that it is in the world. So that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to continue to seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And in the process of that, we will turn from our wicked ways and then we'll hear from God. And when we begin to hear from God, we'll hear the assignment or the, the mission that he wants us to accomplish here in this season. And thereby giving glory and honor and bringing glory and honor to the body of Christ, to the body of Christ. So we praise God for the, this word that we're talking about thus far. In our Bible study tonight, we're going to be dealing with how to go through a crisis, how to go through a crisis. And I want you to turn with me. I want you to literally turn with me uh, to the book of Philippians, to the book of Philippians chapter uh, number four, the book of Philippians chapter number four. And as you begin to turn your pages over to that particular uh, chapter, what's interesting about uh, Philippians is that uh, the Apostle Paul, he wrote this particular epistle to the church at Philippi. And Paul had a special relationship with them. And um, because they, they, they really sought out Paul and they really supported his ministry uh, in the very beginning. In other words, they believed in Paul when Paul was a nobody, when, when other people were turning their backs on him and not believing in the message uh, that Paul had. And, believing in the anointing that God had given unto him. Uh, they supported him. They undergirded his ministry. And I want to say that it's important for us uh, to undergird ministry, uh, to support those whom God has anointed and whom God has appointed for these particular times. And that was the Philippi church, the church in Philippi. They undergirded his ministry and they, they supported him and they loved on him. And in turn, Paul loved on them. And he wrote this epistle, this epistle to them uh, while he was in jail. He was thinking of them and he didn't want them to get discouraged. He didn't want them to get discouraged because of his bonds, because of his affliction. And you know, uh, brothers and sisters, that's a true mark of a pastor. A pastor doesn't want the congregation uh, to get discouraged as, as he or she may be going through uh, turbulent times. Uh, the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of them all. And, you know, oftentimes we have to realize that the man and the woman of God, whom God has placed uh, in a particular position, um, they have to be sometimes the first partakers of the suffering. 
Uh, but through it all, through it all, uh, that leads uh, to an example that causes uh, them to be example to the body of Christ because uh, uh, the body needs a visible example of how to go through, how to go through with grace, how to go through with the anointing, how to go through with the right character, with the right, with the right mindset, and how to mirror and reflect the body of Christ. So Paul was encouraging the church at Philippi uh, to, to be strong, to, to take his example, to, to, to be a church that, that was able to look at him and how he went through and to mirror his actions and, and his deeds. I love the third chapter, as I'm just trying to set this up for us. Uh, I love the third chapter because he says in the beginning, beware of dogs and beware of the concision. Basically, he's saying, beware of evil influences. You know, the uh, evil communications or evil influences can corrupt us. And Paul uh, is encouraging uh, the saints uh, not to uh, be engaged and be watchful. Uh, in this particular time, we have to be watchful. Watchful for evil influences and, and, and evil things that would try to enter into our hearts and our minds to sway us, to turn us away from the body of Christ, to sway us and turn us away from the power that is in Christ Jesus. And Paul himself, and as he begins to talk to them, especially in the beginning of this the third chapter, he's encouraging to, to beware and and then when he gets toward the end of the chapter, uh, he's encouraging them once again, guard and to watch. Uh, we have to be on guard. We have to watch as well as pray. So that leads me then, uh, beloved, to the fourth chapter. And I want to really begin and hit on this particular Bible study. And we're in our subject once again, is going through a crisis. What must we do as we go through a crisis, especially in times like these? So in Philippians chapter number four, and verse number one, he says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. Notice how he's expressing his love for these saints. Um, he says, my, my joy and my crown. Now notice what he says. He uses a military term. Stand fast in the Lord, uh, my dearly beloved. And he's telling them, you know, though you may be going through a difficult situation because I'm not there with you. And you see uh, that the church is suffering persecution. Um, and and my, myself, Paul is saying, I'm in bonds. I'm in, I'm in jail, you know, being thrown in jail for um, being um, suffering for righteousness sake. And he says, he says, stand fast. And that's a military position or a military term that means hold your position. Hold your position. Stand. Fortify yourself. Stand fast. Amen. So the, one of the things that we need to do in the times of crisis, when situations come upon us, they can kind of uh, befuddle us. They can kind of uh, uh, catch us off guard and we can, being catched off guard, we can be shaken. We can be uh, uh, cut off guard unawares. But Paul is saying, Paul is saying, stand fast. In other words, get a hold of yourself. Get a grip. Uh, uh, when, when you're going through a crisis or a turbulent time, um, and it may catch you by surprise and your emotions and your feelings may be all over the place. Uh, there's some time uh, you got to make up your mind and say to yourself, talk to yourself like David encouraged his own self. Uh, uh, get a hold of yourself. Uh, 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 shake yourself. Bring yourself back to your right remembrance. In other words, remember whose you are and remember who you are. Amen. Remember that you've been bought with a price, that you are not your own, that you got to grasp hold of, of, of 
of, of what you're going through and realize that what you're going through, you know, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. You got to talk to yourself and literally quiet yourself. So that's what Paul was saying to them, to them to, to stand fast, to, to grasp hold of themselves. And let me say this, that uh, oftentimes when we go through uh, situations that catch us off guard, um, we can literally lose it. And the Lord doesn't want us to lose it. Um, in other words, uh, things can be come upon you that are so that can cause so much pressure, that can cause so much anxiety, that can cause so much fear, and you have it in your mind that man, I'm losing it, but you you uh, you can't lose it. In other words, you got to bring yourself under control. You got to take control of your emotions and take control of your feelings and. And don't panic. Uh, don't fear. In other words, you've got to bring yourself under to be able to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. In other words, don't forget your training. Don't forget the Bible studies that uh, the Lord has exposed you to down through the years that has prepared you literally for such a time as this. In other words, the Lord never allows things to come upon us that he's not prepared us for because God doesn't want us to be destroyed by anything. Hallelujah. So God prepares us. And the Bible is literally a, a great uh, a master plan for disaster. If there's ever a disaster that should uh, uh, come upon the people of God, You'll find the solution in the word of God. You'll find what you must do in the word of God to be able to come all over or to overcome every obstacle, to be able to overcome every condition and every situation. You'll find it in the word of God. So therefore, beloved, that's why Paul's told them to stand fast. Stand fast, hallelujah, in the Lord. Not don't stand fast in the, uh, uh, the world's government, the world's economy, your own thoughts, your own ideas, but stand fast in the Lord. And he's using that Lord, Lord as the ruler, hallelujah, as the, he that has power, that he that has authority. And, I, and as I was in prayer, my God, I'm getting excited. I feel the Holy Ghost. As I was in prayer today, and I was declaring, de decreeing the power of the Lord and the name of the Lord I went into is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. And the Lord revealed to me that, that, that there is no other name, hallelujah, that is given unto heaven uh, where men must be saved by, but other than the name of Jesus. And that name, every knee is going to bow, even the coronavirus. Hallelujah, that name has to bow down to Jesus. Hallelujah, fear and anxiety has to bow down to Jesus. Everything that would, would, would hinder us from making it in to this kingdom and making us into New Jerusalem has to bow down to Jesus. Hallelujah, because there's power in that name. So dearly beloved, um, we want to realize that though we're going through a crisis situation and though uh, it may stun you, though it may shock you, but you got to come to yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to shake yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. So as we uh, look at the next verse of scripture, he says, I beseech ye uh, Iodias and I beseech ye Syntyche that, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And basically what Paul was saying about these two individuals, he's telling them, stop arguing. Stop, stop quarreling among you, uh, among each other. Amen. And if you're going to go through a crisis, you've got to stop quarreling among the saints. You've got to stop arguing and fighting among yourselves. You've got to bring about the unity and the peace and the love of God that is needed to get you through uh, this particular time in this particular situation. One thing that the enemy does, he likes to bring about confusion. 
And when there's confusion, especially in the body of Christ, the scripture says that there's every evil work. So uh, you've got to come to terms with one another. Come to terms with your brothers and your sisters. Come to terms with those that are even in your household. Hallelujah. Don't allow the enemy to step in and to kind of confuse us and will we argue and fight and devour one another. Hallelujah. By God in heaven. So as we move toward the next verse, and he says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, uh, with Clement also with the other my yoke fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Paul talked about um, helping each other whose names are in the book of life. Now, I want to move uh, pretty quickly here uh, because our time is, is moving quite quickly. Hallelujah. And focus really on the next several verses, the next several verses. Notice Paul says in verse number four, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. Uh, some people may say, well, if I'm going through a crisis, why must I rejoice? And it goes back to my statement that I made earlier, that, that we have to remember the di disaster plan that the Lord has put together in the scriptures, remember your training. The scripture says when you are persecuted, he tells us to rejoice and to be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Even James tells you, he says, count it all joy when you go through divers temptations. Amen. He tells you to count it all joy when you go through divers temptations and to allow patience to have her perfect work that you may be perfect an entire wanting nothing. And what Paul is saying here when he tells us to rejoice, he's actually telling you to literally to delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. Take pleasure in him. In other words, what do you mean take pleasure in him? Take pleasure in the fact that the Lord is in control. Hallelujah. You've got to realize, beloved, that, that, that even in this, even in this situation that we're going through in this, in this world, in this pandemic, God is still in control. He's never lost control. In fact, all of this was calculated before the foundation of the world, and it didn't take him by surprise. The Lord is not somewhere uh, up in heaven uh, scratching his head saying, well, what are we going to do about this? Hallelujah. The Lord has already established a way of escape. The Lord has already had a plan before the foundation of the world what, it, what, what he was going to do in this particular situation. So, so, so we have to rejoice in the fact that our God is still in control. He sits high and he looks low and he's in control. Hallelujah. He's never lost control. Therefore, that's why Paul says, tells us to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And then for emphasis, he says, again, I say, what? Rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give praises unto the Lord because he has allowed this but he has already made a way of escape, that he's already in control. So that next verse, verse number five, Paul says, notice what he says, hallelujah. Let your moderation be known unto all men that uh, the Lord is at hand. In other words, my God, let me go back, let me go back. Let me go back to, to that fourth verse when I talked about rejoicing in the Lord and, and that the Lord is in control. I want you to turn with me over just briefly here, hallelujah, to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, Psalms 37. 
And uh, it begins, it talks about that first verse. It says, uh, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against uh, the workers of iniquity, for they shall be soon cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. But for, notice verse number three. This is where we're at right here. Notice verse number three. He says, trust in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why you need to rejoice. Hallelujah. Because you can trust in the Lord. Not everybody can trust in the Lord. But you need to trust in the Lord. Now notice what he says. Trust in the Lord and do what? Do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily shalt thou be fed. The Lord is going to bless you. That's why you need to rejoice. The Lord is going to deliver us and bring us out of this condition and situation. That's why you need to rejoice. That there's no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah. Somebody say our God. Our God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, is in control. And he's going to bring down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Notice what it says. Verily, thou shalt be fed. Now, notice verse number four. Delight thyself. Hallelujah. Delight thyself also where? In the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Hallelujah. That's why you need to rejoice. You need to rejoice because you're going to delight yourself in the Lord. Be happy. Hallelujah, that he's on your side. Be happy that he is a way maker. Hallelujah, be happy that he is a heart fixer. Be happy that he is a mind regulator. Hallelujah, and notice verse number five. My God, I feel the anointing in this place. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Trust in him, commit thyself. Commit thy way unto the Lord and he shall bring it to pass. What to pass? Your deliverance, your breakthrough. Hallelujah. He'll bring to pass your way out. Hallelujah. He'll keep you from falling. Thank you, Jesus. He'll be able to present you faultless. My God, anybody that knows the plan of God, anybody that studies the word of God knows that this is not the end. This is not how God is going to end this particular world. Hallelujah. Jesus has to come back first. Jesus has to rapture the, rapture the church. Hallelujah. Before we enter into any type of long lasting destruction. Hallelujah. God is on our side. Hallelujah. It is God that keepeth the house. It is God that makes a way out of no way. My God in heaven, brothers, when sisters, we've got to delight ourselves and commit our way unto the Lord. That's why we got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things the scripture says shall be added unto us. My God, I'm getting excited up in here. My God, because God, hallelujah, he's on the throne and he's on our side. Hallelujah, my God, my God. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word on today. And let us, let us go back. Let us go back to the scriptures. Thank you, Lord. And particularly uh, verse number five. Verse number five. He says, let our moderation. Amen. Let our moderation. Uh, what be known unto all men. And notice what he says. The Lord is at hand. Now that moderation there means uh, let your gentleness, let a gentle spirit come upon you. In other words, be gracious, be gracious, be unselfish, amen? Be merciful, be tolerant, be patient. In other words, uh, we have to, in the midst of crisis, not uh, uh, to model Godly behavior, godly character. Amen. That's what he means by when he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Thank you, Lord. In other words, uh, when you're dealing with other people, you don't want to walk around fearful. You don't want to walk around unconfident and unsure. Because I'm sure that people have approached you 
and have wondering, saying a question, well, what's going on? What's happening? Amen. And, and, and because you have already named the name of the Lord, they're looking to you for a word. They're looking to you for confidence and strength. So therefore, he says, that's why he says, let your moderation uh, be known unto all men. In other words, don't be selfish. Uh, uh, be gentle. Be Show mercy. Amen. Be tolerant. Be anxious for nothing. Amen. Don't be, don't be fearful. And because he's saying, because of that, the Lord is at hand. The Lord is soon to come. Amen. The scripture says that the Lord is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Jesus, I don't have to tell you, hallelujah, that, that, that the Lord is closer today than he was on yesterday. My God, no man knows the day or the hour when the Lord is going to come and rapture his church uh, from out of this present age. Amen. But he's not. He's coming. The signs of the times uh, I've already been written. The, the signs of the times are already been established. The kingdom of heaven is being preached in every language, in every tongue. And, and as soon as all of that happens, Jesus is going to come. So the Lord is at hand. So the Lord wants you to model his character. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight. Be patient. He wants you to model what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Have that operating within you and model that type of behavior. For the Lord is at hand. Notice what he says. Uh, verse uh, number six, he says, be careful for nothing. And that word, be careful for nothing, literally means be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be worried. Amen. Be anxious for nothing. Uh, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. In a crisis, uh, what you ought not do is to be anxious and to be worried. Uh, how you think and what you think upon is important. Amen. You've got to think soberly according to the word of God. And when he says, don't be anxious or don't be worried, but in every circumstance, in every situation, notice what he says, by prayer. Amen. The Lord wants us to seek him in every situation and in every condition. He wants us to pray. Hallelujah. The body of Christ if they don't do anything else in this particular time, we need to seek the Lord and pray. If my people that were called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Hallelujah. We know the panacea and the panacea is Jesus. And if we pray and come together, he'll release the bomb in Gilead. He'll release the bomb unto us that will heal our land, that will deliver us, hallelujah, from all of our diseases and all of our sicknesses. But we have to pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Not worry, but pray. Notice what he says. With prayer and supplication. That word supplication means your petition. You've got to pray uh, 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 with a, a petition unto the Lord. Now, a petition is different from declaring and decreeing. A petition is, is you making intercession for somebody. You're petitioning for somebody that the Lord will intervene in their lives. And that's where the saints of God that have been called by his name, we need to take the time and petition and intervene for a world that can't pray for themselves. We need to be able to call on the Lord 
whereby the Lord is able to deliver those who are going through conditions and situations that walk around in a seen white gray but don't know the Lord, we can petition for them that the Lord will save them, that the Lord will deliver them, that the Lord will bring them out. That's how we shine as lights. That's how we shine as lights, especially in these particular times. Hallelujah, my God. We need to pray for people and petition the Lord for people that don't know him, that don't understand him, that he will intervene in their lives. My God, my God. Remember when the beloved apostle Paul, when Jesus met up with him on the road of Damascus, and he said, I have appeared for thee, for do thee, for this purpose, to make thee a minister, that you may turn men from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. Notice that they may receive repentance and remission of their sins, that they may attain an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And that mission has been passed on to us. Hallelujah. We have to petition and bombard heaven for those that don't know Jesus. Hallelujah. So that we can be in self-control. So that let our moderation be made known. They can see our gentleness, our patience, our perseverance. Hallelujah. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. Because Jesus is soon to come. My God, my God. Notice, notice what he says. In that particular scripture, he said, he said, he said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Then he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Notice, there's that word, with thanksgiving. Hallelujah, thanksgiving and praise. My God, is a weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. The Lord revealed that to me some months ago when he talks about put on the whole armor of God, but your praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. Your praise is a weapon. It will guard your heart. It will guard your mind. Hallelujah. It will keep you in a positive atmosphere in your heart and in your conscience. You got to praise him. The Bible tells us praise him. Hallelujah. We got to praise him always in everything, making our requests known unto the Lord. He said, let everything that have breath do what? Praise ye the Lord. And when you feel a doom and a gloom spirit trying to overtake you and try to overcome you, you ought to praise him. Hallelujah. You ought to lift him up. That's why he said, oh, magnify. Hallelujah, the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. My God in heaven, we ought to exalt the name of Jesus. We ought to lift up the name of Jesus. We ought to magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, especially in times like these. And when you pray, my God, when you, when you, when you make supplication, you ought to end your prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. In other words, you need to put some gravy on the top of it. Hallelujah. In other words, you need to put a cherry on top of that Sunday that you just created. Hallelujah. And praise your God. Begin to thank him for what he's about to do. Begin to encourage him, so, uh, so to speak. Hallelujah. So, so it shows that you believe him. It shows that you trust in him. Hallelujah, my God, hallelujah. The Lord wants you to, when you leave his presence, he wants you to be encouraged and strengthened. So as we move on, I got about 15 more minutes here. Thank you, Lord, and I'm gonna let you go. Thank you, Jesus, but I could go on forever. Hallelujah, there's something down on the inside. Hallelujah, that's telling me to go ahead. Thank you, Jesus, my God. As we look here in these next verses, and we're talking about how to go through a crisis. My God, how to go through a crisis. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible has a disaster plan for us. And we got to remember our training. You remember your mama said, you got to remember your home training. Amen. You got to remember 
the, the home training. You got to remember the Bible class. You got to remember what the word that God has put in you. Hallelujah. Put in you for such a time as this. Thank you, Lord. Don't be anxious for nothing. Don't be worried about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Tomorrow has the, the cares and the sufficiency of itself. Hallelujah. But worry. Hallelujah. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Hallelujah. For he careth for you. Dearly beloved, our next verse, uh, we in Philippians chapter number four. And then he says, uh, uh, I want to look at that, that seventh verse. My God. I want to look at that seventh verse. And it says, If you do this, you pray with supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Notice verse number seven. He said, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, dearly beloved, I want you to listen to me uh, at this particular time. You cannot control every scenario or everything that happens. You can't control everything that happens to you and every scenario that happens to you or every scenario that happens in the world. But you can control, I want you to hear me, you can control your attitude. You can control your attitude and how you are going to respond to every scenario. Amen? Situations may come up on you, you can control how you're going to respond. And the proper response to every scenario, to every situation, is to respond according to the word of God. And in order to spot, respond properly according to the word of God, you have to seek him. Amen? You have to seek him through fasting. Seek him through prayer. Seek him through study. Amen? Three, seek him through obedience until that word gets in your spirit gets in your soul, amen, so that you'll be able to operate according to the word of God. Now notice what he says. If you pray and you seek him, amen, you will receive something. <laughs> Hallelujah, my friend, I'm happy. You will receive something. Notice what he said. Notice, he said, and the peace of God, amen, God will share with you his peace. Hallelujah. Not anybody's peace. Thank you, Lord. The peace of God that comes through him. Amen. Hallelujah. Not any type of peace, but the peace of God. Not, not, not Pastor Quinn's peace, not Blow Joe peace, but the peace that comes from God. Isn't that what you want? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want the peace of God. Amen. And that peace of God that originates from him. It comes from him. You see why we got to seek him? You see why we got to call on him? Hallelujah. So we can receive his peace. Amen. That peace that originates and comes from him. And that, that peace, a peace that, 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 that has come from him that reassures your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. God, he'll send you a peace that'll give you assurance in the midst of your storm. Though things around you may be falling apart, God can give you a peace that, notice, that transcends all understanding. Hallelujah. That, that he'll give you a peace that nobody else can understand. They want to they know why you got joy. Why you got this kind of peace. Because you've been in touch with the master. Because you've been praying unto the Lord. And the Lord has gave you a peace that guards your mind. Hallelujah. That guards your heart. That guards your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. My God. And notice what Paul says. 
It guards your heart, hallelujah, where it sits your will. In your heart is your will. Thank you, Lord. And in your mind, your mind represents your conscience. So in other words, he's saying, I'll guard your total, your total mind, your total conscience, your total heart. I'll keep you in perfect peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whose mind is stayed on me. It's a, it's a dual combination that keeps you in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Things that come to your mind first, it can cause you to be unstabilized. Thank you, Lord. But if it happens to slip through your mind and try to enter into your heart, it's guarded. Hallelujah. It's like being double locked. Hallelujah, my God. It's like being sealed with a seal that, that, that whatever tries to penetrate, it can't get you. It can't, it can't attack you to where you'll fall by the wayside. God gives you a good peace. Hallelujah. We ought to clap our hands and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Especially in times like these. Notice what he says. He says, let, let, he'll, he'll keep you. Hallelujah. In perfect peace. Thank you, Lord. And he'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. Let us look here briefly. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of uh, St. John. St. John. St. John chapter 14. I'm almost finished, beloved. Y'all just give me a few more minutes. Hallelujah. I got five more minutes. Thank you, Lord. Y'all just bear with me. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 14. And just drop down with me uh, to verse uh, 27. And this is Jesus praying. Uh, in my mind, I call this the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> But Jesus is praying and he says, let me just read verse 26. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. See what I said? What I said about the word of God, hide it in your heart. Amen. That, it, that, that, that don't forget your training. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Ghost will remind you. Uh, if you study this word and begin to seek God, he'll remind you what you need to do in your times of need. Notice what he said. Uh, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now notice, verse 27 is where we're at. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Then he says, let not your heart, what? Be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. In other words, beloved, the peace that Jesus gives you, he gives you a peace to keep you calm. Amen? In everything. And he gives you that peace to keep you calm. And he also gives you courage. Amen. When you when you're in a fight and you calm yourself, you can also gain courage. Amen. Courage and you can be strengthened for the challenge. That's why we need the peace that passes all understanding. That's why in the midst of crisis, we need to seek the Lord. Amen. Call upon him while he is near. And and when we seek the Lord and call upon him while he is near, he'll give us strength and courage, amen, to, to he says, let the wicked forsake his way. If he'll give us strength and courage so that we can forsake our way, amen, and he'll give us strength and courage so that we can forsake our thoughts, amen, and our thoughts are not his thoughts, amen, his ways are are not our ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the only thing that really matters. My thoughts don't matter. Your thoughts don't matter. What really matters. God glory. In, in, in this particular day and time. So therefore. You've got to seek him. Call on him. Get courage. Get strength from the Lord. Let him give you his peace. 
Hallelujah. That passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord. And, and you've got to focus in on God's disaster plan. Dearly beloved, that concludes our Bible study. Thank you, Jesus, my God. And, and nothing can be accomplished without the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing can be accomplished without his anointing resting upon your life. The Bible says that ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He said, if you're going to be a worshiper of God, you've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. The world, hallelujah, they they, they all confused and, and don't know what to do. My God, but the saints of God that know how to pray. Hallelujah, that, that have received of the Holy Ghost, that have received and tasted of his anointing, that have studied the word of God. We are to be building ourselves up uh, on our most holy faith. The scripture says, praying in the Holy Ghost, making intercession uh, for those that need help, making intercession for those that need deliverance. God is calling on us. Hallelujah, the invisible church. Hallelujah, to make a manifestation in this world. Oh, my friend, God is looking for the invisible church. Hallelujah, to come together. Hallelujah, and make a physical manifestation. Hallelujah, in this world. And if we begin to call on the name of the Lord, thank you, Lord, and we ourselves turn from our wicked ways, we then hear from heaven. And I guarantee you, brother and sister, God will heal this land. Hallelujah. First of all, he'll forgive our sins. Thank you, Lord, those things that separate people from God. Hallelujah. And he'll heal our land. Oh, I want to pray. I want to pray for each and every one of us. And then we'll conclude our Bible study uh, for this evening. And I can't wait till Sunday. Hallelujah. I'm, I feel so excited. The Lord dropped it in my heart. He said, you need to have by Sunday school also. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to start at 930. Hallelujah. If the Lord will, if the Lord say the same, I'm going to start at 930. Do our Sunday school. Thank you, Lord. Then we're going to have our praise team here at 11 o'clock. Yeah, the, the, the sounds of Judah. Thank you, Lord. Praising God. And then we're going to have an impactful word from the Lord. My God, I'm getting excited. Hallelujah. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about the anointing. I'm excited about what God is doing in this hour. Hallelujah. God is up to something. Thank you, Lord. God is turning our hearts back to him. God is manifesting glory. Thank you, Lord. And, and my beloved, hallelujah, I hear a lot of preachers teaching and preaching about being in the land of Goshen. Hallelujah. And in the land of Goshen, that's where the children of Israel, when they were down in the wilderness, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. They were down in Egypt. My God, and God was sending forth the plagues, but they were in a safety place. Hallelujah. They were in a place of refuge. My God, I believe that Goshen today is the body of Christ. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. And that's where we are today. Beloved, we're in that secret place. We're dwelling in Goshen. Hallelujah. Where the plague can't come nigh us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes somebody, hey, hallelujah, even the saints may be overtaken by the coronavirus. But you've got to remember what Jesus said. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that believeth, hallelujah, shall never die. Do you believe that, my friend? Hallelujah. Do you believe that, my friend? Hallelujah, my God. We ought to give God a praise. We ought to give God a praise. In this atmosphere, we ought to magnify the name of the Lord. My God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, hallelujah, even on this hour. Thank you, Jesus. My time is up. But let us remember. Let us remember men and women and children. Let us remember 
hallelujah, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Lift up your bowed down head. Strengthen your feeble knees. You ought to go, hallelujah, after this Bible study, down on your knees and give God thanks. You ought to go down on your knees and give God a praise. You ought to go down on your knees and worship. Hallelujah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, my God, my God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you. Hey, glory. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the glory. We thank you for the power. We thank you for this hour, Lord, to hear of your word. Hallelujah, that we may know what we must do, that we may know what we must do and understand. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul under the sound of our voice. We ask you, Lord, that you bless us, Lord, that we remember your word. Hallelujah, that we remember the training. Thank you, Lord, that we remember what you have said. Hallelujah, that nothing has taken you by surprise. Hallelujah, in every temptation, you've made a way of escape. Hallelujah, that we might be able to bear it. And now, Lord, we pray, Lord, that the blood of Jesus, that the blood be upon each and every one of us, that your anointing rest, that your glory rest upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you cover our families, that you cover our houses, that you cover our workers, that you cover every scenario and situation, that you bind the adversary on every hand. We declare and decree healing. We declare and decree deliverance in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for your peace that passes all understanding. We pray for joy that's unspeakable and that's full of glory. Lord, we pray for a right heart and a sound mind, the mind of Christ and the spirit of Christ. Lord, we pray that you have your way in the midst of us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Dearly beloved, hallelujah, we thank God for this opportunity. My God, and I'll see you on Sunday. Hallelujah, Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord, at, at 9.30 a.m. My God, my God, be safe. Hallelujah, don't forget, my God, don't forget to communicate with your brothers and your sisters in the name of Jesus. Make yourselves available in Jesus' name, amen.